this is Steve Zook in USA. And today we're going to talk about the teardrop function in Zookin's CR8000 Design Force. With teardrop, there's a couple of different ways that you can go about it. You can either go about it from a post process standpoint or from an interactive routing standpoint. So, for instance, if I take a look at layer three here, and if I go to my route settings, I've got the option here to toggle on or off teardrop behaviors. And I can set whether I want that to be an arc or a scalloped contour or a tangent or straight line contour, and then the length ratio and the minimum line width ratio. So basically these ratios specify what the contour or, or what the size of, of that teardrop is going to work out to be. Um, so if I grab this track and start routing, you'll see that it's started creating a teardrop there. And so I've got this kind of uh, the ability to rubber band it either to a minimum or let it go out to its maximum size. And then when I instantiate that, we end up with a teardrop that looks something like that. So I can do that from an interactive standpoint, or I can do it from a post-process standpoint. So if we look at this section of routes, there's no teardrops on any of these. If I exit out of that route function, I can then go to the track function again and go to this reinforcement tab. Now on this reinforcement tab, there's a lot of different options that I can set for how these teardrops are going to behave. Um, I can set uh, parameters around the area fill type of teardrop. So I've got teardrop, line, and area fill. Line is just a collection of lines that, that, that form the, the teardrop. Teardrop is just kind of a, a pseudo entity that goes ahead and forms the teardrop or area fill is a, kind of a beefier copper generation capability. But if we just look at the teardrop function and we have the spread area fill toggle turned on, so it's going to push the area fill out of the way when it generates it. Um, and then we've got different modes here. So I can generate teardrops or I can delete teardrops or I can change teardrops. Any of those three modes can be active. Um, and then I can generate either this you know, kind of line reinforcement area, area fill reinforcement area, and I can set the parameters for those if I want to use those specific options. In this case, I'm just using teardrop. And so what it's going to do is if we look at that mode, um, we've got the ability to specify that it's SMD pins, through hole pins, via pads. I want teardrops generated on all of those. And then if I look at that teardrop mode, I've got the ability again to set that length ratio to specify what the size of that teardrop is going to be. So if I get that out of the way, if I just select a track, you can see that it quickly generates a teardrop. So I can then actually zoom out a little bit. And in this mode, I can just box select and generate teardrops across all of those you know, contours there. So it looks like I've generated most of my teardrops, but I can see a couple of instances where it didn't. So let's take a look at how we would examine that. If we go to the check function, and just to be clear, these are checks only. These are not, uh, there's no attempt made by the check engine to resolve these issues. Uh, these are just flags to let us know uh, where things have not met constraints or are not present. Um, so, you know, this is a pure checking function. Uh, resolution of those issues uh, relies on the same tools that we've been looking at, and I'll, I'll show that as well um, when we're done checking. And we go to these DRC settings. You'll see that I've got a lot of checks toggled on for, uh, you know, general uh, route checks. Um, so let's say I'm in a routing mode, and these are the checks that I've chosen to use in my routing mode. Well, I can also have a teardrop check mode. And if I open up this XML that's for teardrops, then teardrops are the only thing that's turned on. And I've set some characteristics for that. So I'm 
checking SMD pins, through hole pins via pad. So I want teardrops on essentially all my possible targets. And I've set a minimum length ratio, a lower limit line width, and an upper limit line width. Because once I get to a certain point of, of width of line, I probably don't care about a teardrop anymore because there's plenty of copper reinforcement there. So I've got these characteristics that are set. And I can save those characteristics just by going to the save parameters. So I can quickly jump from parameter set to parameter set for my DRC checks to kind of drill down to my areas of concern and, and get rid of the background noise. I just want to look at my teardrops for right now. So if I go into the DRC mode and select check and I just box select this area, I end up with some some DRCs here. So I've got some things that didn't teardrop for various reasons. So if I go to my error mark list, I can just select that and it kind of zooms in and shows me, yeah, it's, there's a missing teardrop here. And then if I look at this one, there's also an undersized teardrop here. So I've got this measured value of 1.625. And if you remember right, under my check settings, I had 1.7 as my length ratio check. So I've got, you know, an issue there that I need to resolve. So what I can do is kind of take a look at some of these instances and figure out how best to resolve them. So I can look here and I can see that this probably is a choke point where it didn't want to generate a teardrop because of the spacing. So if I escape out of this and I grab this track and I just try and manipulate it up some and, and, and create some space. I can just go ahead and clean that up a little bit. And then if I go back to my track mode and reinforce that guy, I get a teardrop there. So that one's now resolved. And, you know, same kind of case here. It's a, a very small teardrop, so it's undersized. So again, escape out. Let that clear out some. And it didn't really rubber band out the way I wanted it to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the reinforce mode. And I'm going to set this mode to delete. And that was already selected, so it rips it out. And then I'll set that mode to generate. And now I've got a much better looking teardrop, much uh, much larger profile. So just by whittling through the section here, I can go through and quickly clean out these issues um, and clear them up and get them essentially resolved. And then I'm good to go with regards to teardrops. So, you know, it just kind of gives you an idea of, of some of these teardrop capabilities and how to check teardrops across a design. So I think that's all we're going to show for now. Okay. If you have any questions, please let us know. And thanks very much.